JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab-created or earth-created, James Allen has over 200,000 conflict-free stones. Then, you pick your ring setting and metal. And if you need some help, they have real-time diamond consultations available, where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at jamesallen.com code podcast. That's jamesallen.com code podcast. So I'm a father of what? I gotta find a babysitter. I found care.com and I was blown away. Through the platform, I was able to find local and experienced candidates along with their reviews and rates, which were way more affordable than I anticipated. Care.com really put me at ease knowing that they were all required to go through a background check. If you're like me and you need to find someone reliable for your child care necessities, check out care.com. Find the ideal sitters for your child care needs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Friday Walkthrough. I'm Cole Carmody alongside Monty Spiller. We are talking all things K-State football this week. South Dakota, it's game week. By the time you're listening to this, the game will be either tonight or tomorrow. Crazy to think about. K-State football is here. It is. It is. Um, I know last time we met, we talked about a bunch of what ifs, what we needed to happen to uh, find out what we're going to look like. But like you said, the time is now. The time is now. Well, we're going to be talking about the South Dakota specifically. We'll, we'll touch on them. We'll kind of talk about what this game means for K-State, get into a little bit of the bigger picture stuff in the second half. But before we go any further, I must say uh, the Friday walkthrough is sponsored by our good friends at the Part-Time Beverage Company. First half or The first half is sponsored by the Cape Cod. The second half will be sponsored by the Club Special. So make sure you're checking those out wherever you can buy your alcohol. Um Let's just dive into this because there's so much to talk about with this game. But I want to start with South Dakota because I feel like this week there's been a lot made about K-State, but there hasn't been a lot with South Dakota. I mean, this is this is a team that made the FCS playoffs last year. Yes. They have had some success. I mean, this is a good program. Yeah, people, you know, a lot of times when you hear about the Dakotas, people automatically think North Dakota State, which rightfully so because they've been dominant in FCS for how many years, I don't know. But a lot of times, the other teams get overlooked, like a South Dakota. But if you really look at their record and, and their their work and their head coach, I believe this is his seventh year with them going into the season. Um, a couple of years ago, they beat Kansas. They've beaten Minnesota. People forget um, a few years back, K-State was down yeah, um, early and going into halftime against South Dakota. And it took a, a – a, 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 if it was a punt return or yep, a punt I can't return. remember. Yeah, and I, was it Zuber? Mm-hmm. Isaiah uh, Zuber, yep. Try to turn the game around, but outside of that, they were uh, controlling the game. So this is no cakewalk. No, it's not. And, and that's crazy you bring that up because we're actually having to run a piece on uh, Go Power Cat on game day, talk, looking at the last 10 times K State's played an FCS opponent. And you're right. South Dakota, that game, I want to say that was 2018, was, was kind of a crazy game. You, yeah, you don't, yeah. people forget that K State, like you said, was down for a lot of that game. And, South Dakota is a good program. I, I I don't think that there's any denying that, but I mean there's a reason, right? There there's a there's a talent level between FCS and FBS. Yeah. But with that being said, how many times have we seen K State pick off all these FCS talented players, and you know now they're they're playing for K State. So I think that you know this is not a game that K State fans should overlook, and I know the coaching staff won't overlook it. No, they won't. And and like you and I know, and a lot of people who understand the game of football. You know, FCS, FBS, there's a big difference in numbers. But overall, as far as talent, there's not a whole lot of difference anymore because you get these kids who want to go D1, FBS, but may not get the offer they want, so they go to the FCS. And then they dominate the FCS level. But then when they play the FBS, they have something to prove. And a lot of times, uh, the biggest difference is depth. You know, you go to K-State, you go to South Dakota, we may have three or four guys that are studs at linebacker. They might have two. Mm-hmm. And that's a big part of it as well. But like K-State, and I, and I know Coach Kleiman won't overlook them. Coming from North Dakota State, right. he understands what it's about. And I think he will have the team ready to play, to play a quality team. Uh, will South Dakota win? I don't think so. At least I'm, I'm hoping not anyway. <laughs> but I think it would be a better game than some people are giving it credit for, especially early. You know, and a lot of times – these teams come in with not a lot to lose. Exactly. You know, and 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 so they can kind of throw everything at you and and play with with uh, play cautiously. You know, there's, there's no worry for K State. If we lose, hey, they're not what they thought they were. So mm-hmm. that's the pressure for us. There's a lot of pressure on K State. I mean, everything from Colin Klein. People 
people may be overlooking this, but he's going into the Ring of Honor on Saturday, right? <laughs> he's got. We talked to him today uh, when we were recording this. We talked to him on Thursday, and and I asked him. I said, "Have you thought about it at all?" And he goes, "Oh, you know, no. I'm just focusing on the game." Which I don't know if I buy that. First of all, <laughs> second of all, I mean, there's a lot going on with K State this week. It's it's going to be a good weekend for K State football, but the game is definitely something that um, is important, right? I mean, you got to start the season off on on, on a win, and yeah. and one player for South Dakota I want to highlight is returning quarterback. Carson Camp, um, crazy with him, starts as a true freshman at an FCS school, which, again, Monty, you talked about it, but we don't see that as often just because uh, the older guys at the FCS level are usually so much more talented than the younger guys because they're able to stay in the system. There's not as many transfers at that level, but he comes in, starts as a true freshman, uh, wins the biggest rivalry game for South Dakota against South Dakota State on a Hail Mary. Yeah. And they end up losing in the playoffs to Southern Illinois. But this is a guy with a lot of experience. And um, leading the leading rusher from last year for South Dakota is out. He tore his ACL, I believe, in spring ball. And so they're going to throw the ball. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's I firmly believe that's what's going to happen. And so it's going to be a good test for the secondary early on. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and thinking about that, it doesn't worry me, but there is some concern. Our secondary is young, you know. And uh, looking at the depth chart, I think I believe all our safeties coming back – the majority of them are first-year players in this program, in this system, um, playing together collectively. The quarterback from South Dakota, the guy can play. Like you said, this will be his third year going in as a starter. He's been in big games before. So, obviously, Manhattan is a great atmosphere. We have some of the best college fans in the nation, if not the best. I may be biased. But, you know, he won't get rattled, and I think he'll come ready to play. Now, with that being said, as a team, we're better, in my opinion. But – don't be surprised if you see this guy go out there and put up decent numbers against our secondary and our defense early because we are young and he's a proven quarterback. Do you feel like on the defensive side of the ball, K-State is going to sit back and, and see what you know South Dakota is going to bring? Or do you think that Joe Klinerman is going to line up, play some press coverage, and send the house at, at this kid early on? I mean, I feel like there's two ways looking at it, right? You can sit back and see what they're going to bring and adjust because – Joe Klinerman really doesn't know what he has yet, right? He hasn't seen his guys in action. Or, again, he can be aggressive. I mean, I'll, I'll be curious to see what he chooses. But, I mean, th there has to be a dilemma there. Yeah, I, I could be wrong. But normally, and like I said, the quarterback's not young, but the pieces around him are. And you got to understand, too, the O-line is a big part of it. He can be a great quarterback. And if he has a mediocre or, or young or average O-line, that makes a big difference. If I'm Coach Klinerman, I'm bringing the heat, mm -hmm. you know. And we have, people forget, we say secondary. The corners are involved. We keep focusing on the safeties. Yeah, the safeties are young in this program, but the corners are established. So you can put both of those guys in man-to-man -man situations and bring the heat. And I think Coach Klanderman will bring the heat early and often and, and make this guy make quick decisions. I think what's so fascinating about this defense, and, and we talked a little bit about it last week with the 3-3-5, yeah. but – you put a lot more athletes on the field. Absolutely. Than, and no disrespect to the guys who were in the 4-3, <laughs> but, I mean, now with the 3-3-5, that adds an extra defensive back. Yep. And so, I mean, I'll be curious to see against a team who's likely going to throw the ball a lot how that affects their personnel because, you know, are they going to go with, you know, that jack spot? You, you look at a guy like Khalid Duke who's played there, or are you going to maybe take him out and put in a, a Reggie Stubblefield type you know, player because the, both those guys played the same position last year. So yeah. against a team that throws the ball a lot, are you going to go with maybe more of an edge rusher at that position, a linebacker type, or more of a safety type? It'll be fascinating to see because this is going to be something that they deal with the entire year. Yeah, and, that, and that's a good problem to have. With a 3-3-5, you are allowed to kind of mix and match. And when you do have the athletes that push you in a position where – Okay, they're doing this, you're going in this series. Um, down in distance, you go in this series. And you have two quality guys at that position that are available, so that's a good problem to have, like I said. But I think overall, our team speed on defense will suffice. And like Coach Kleinerman said in the past, we didn't get lined up sometimes in the, <laughs> in the right time, but we played hard and we played fast. Mm -hmm. And I think our speed and our tenacity will overcome some of the mental mistakes early in this game, and, and, and we'll come out on top. I, I think – the, the, the mental mistakes are something that K-State fans should understand <laughs> that it's going to happen, yeah. right? Especially in week one. Like, there's going to be guys that – there might be 10 guys on the field for one play. Like, it's week one. Like, stuff like this happens. Yep. Um, it, it's not going to just click overnight. And, no. and you hope that as the season progresses, you start to cut out some of those dysfunctionalities. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I, this is not – it's not going to be – it's not going to be as easy as it looked in the bowl game – 
Because these guys, a lot of these guys haven't played with each other. They haven't. And, and like talking defense and offense, there are a lot of new pieces in there. But the good news is we have a new quarterback who has been in big games, who's familiar with some of the players. Kay Warner, he was mm -hmm. teammates with him in Nebraska. But then even if it was a freshman quarterback, a transfer quarterback, no matter who it is, if all else fails, you got Deuce behind you. <laughs> and you have a phenomenal O-line. You know what? We're not clicking right now. Run deuce right, run deuce left, run them up the middle. And then other things open up. So there's no one really need to panic, but people need to understand it's not going to be smooth. And then on the flip side, yeah, Coach Klein, not Coach Klein, I'm sorry, Coach Klein called the bowl game, but now he had a whole summer uh, and, and spring ball to get ready and implement new things. So what we are used to seeing, we're not going to see. And, and there's going to be some growing pains, and people need to be patient with that and understand it will come. And I have – absolute faith in our coaching staff going into the season and and one thing i'm very curious to see is how they manage the offense game plan because are they going to go out and show everything i mean you know you played for coach snyder it's no secret that <laughs> coach snyder he played his cards close to the vest in, in the non-conference games and mm -hmm. you know for a better lack of term he unleashed hell during the conference season right i mean are they going to do that in this or are they going to say pull the you know colin klein played for coach snyder is he going to say uh, we're going to kind of hold it back a little bit and, and then wait until we get into conference play. I don't know. I would think that Coach Klein being at his first game calling plays, he's going to be anxious. He's going to want to make those big-time calls. He's going to want to push the ball. And I don't think he would hide that much until they get a you know a bigger lead. But I, I'll be curious to see just because he is one of those uh, Snyder disciples. Yeah, honestly, this is something I don't even know. <laughs> you know, it's one of those <laughs> things where and, – and Coach Klein, he, as a player and as a coach – the guy, he, he he is confident. He always never seemed rattled. You know, when K-State was down, when he was playing quarterback, he always found a way to bring him back. And I believe he'll be the same as a coach. The kids are bought into him. I have yet to meet a person who has something negative to say about him unless you're an opposing player. Yeah. But after the game, you have to respect the guy. And I think going in, it's going to be the same way. So, honestly, I'm kind of excited to find out come Saturday and be like, oh, Okay, mm -hmm. I see what they're doing. So I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. It, and and you throw Adrian Martinez in that mix. I mean, again, you got a new offensive coordinator and a new quarterback. Yeah. How will they mesh together? I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention Nebraska. Everybody <laughs> saw that debacle last weekend. I Ooh. mean, you know, you have Nebraska fans that are saying, "Oh, it was all Adrian Martinez's fault," mm -hmm. and all this. And I think it's pretty obvious that that's not the case. Yeah. I think us K State people who have been around him and have seen the film, seen his highlights, understand there's a lot there with Adrian Martinez. Yeah. How will Colin Klein utilize that? I think that is probably maybe the biggest storyline of this game. And and I think maybe the second one is, well, will they, like like we've just been talking about, will they hold stuff back or will they let him go? I don't know. But I think it'll be fascinating to see how Adrian comes out and plays because now he understands. You talked about Deuce Vaughn. He doesn't have to worry about being the only guy on offense. That's only going to help him. Yeah, and, and not knocking Nebraska's O-line because I'm not very familiar with them as a whole from years past when Martinez played with them, but I know our O-line is going to protect them. And also, I know Martinez understands his teammates has his back, the coaching staff has his back, and the fan base has his back. You know, And even when he does struggle, we're going to be okay. Because like I said before, he's surrounded by a great group of guys. You have a Deuce Vaughn. And honestly, I think Adrian understands the opportunity he has in front of him is like most quarterbacks don't get a second opportunity, mm -hmm. especially at a D1 school in the Big 12 moving forward in a great conference. So he's going to take advantage of it, and I, I'm excited to watch this kid be successful. Ready for this stat? I heard this earlier this week. I couldn't believe it. 45% of the starting quarterbacks that will start this weekend in FBS are transfer quarterbacks. Man. I How would... incredible is that? Interesting. I mean, you would not think that that would be the case, but – you know, we're, we'd, we'd sit here and we turn games on. It's like, oh, he came from this school. He yeah. came from this school. The same is true with Adrian Martinez. Yep. And, and I think how Adrian Martinez goes, not only in this game, um, but in the season, is how K-State's going to go. Yeah. I, I think Adrian's going to come out and have a huge game. I, yeah. I, I firmly believe that. And I, I, I could see K-State get, getting up on them early. We'll get to our predictions here at the end of the show. But I think if K-State gets up on them early, it's only going to increase his confidence. And, and that's only going to be a good thing. No, absolutely. And I'm, I feel comfortable. And like I said, we'll make our predictions. But I feel comfortable about our team going into this game. And I feel like a lot of guys get a lot of reps. I think our ones will get up early and often and they'll get a break. And you get a chance to see some younger guys as well. You know, talking about the quarterback position, I'm kind of curious to see 
who they will rotate in. I know you have the depth chart. You know, will Will Howard get a chance to mm-hmm. get in there under uh, Klein's offense and see what he can do and the running back get in young guys. I want to see young guys get a chance too as well and build on that because depth is important, especially with the Big 12 moving forward. But it's going to be an exciting time. It will be. Uh We'll talk about depth, and we'll also talk about more of the bigger picture when it comes to this team here in the second half. Once again, this is the Friday Walkthrough. Thanks so much for listening. First half is sponsored by the part-time beverage company, Cape Cod specifically. Uh, Make sure you're sticking around for the second half. We will be right back after the short break. Picture this nightmare scenario. You're hosting friends for the big game. It's neck and neck in the fourth quarter, and suddenly you realize you're out of drinks. You start to sweat. Your friends start to turn on you. You're forced to go on a last-second drink run and end up missing the game-winning touchdown while in line. (whistles) Terrifying, isn't it? Luckily, you can avoid the drama with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can shop a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits, then get them delivered right to your watch party. Compare prices across multiple stores in your area, find the best deals on game day drinks, and get back to armchair quarterbacking from, you guessed it, your armchair. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Welcome back, everybody, to the Friday Walkthrough. I'm Cole Carmody alongside Monty Spiller. We're sponsored by the Part-Time Beverage Company. The second half is sponsored by Club Special. Real quick, just a quick plug. Make sure you're subscribing to our YouTube channel, subscribing to the podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And right now at GoPowerCat.com, we have the biggest sale of the year, 75% off. Make sure you go sign up and join part of GoPowerCat. Second half of the show here. We talked about the game. We've talked about kind of what we're looking at maybe what we're looking for specifically assuming everything goes right for k-state they got a pretty big game the next week against missouri i mean there's there's a lot that needs to happen obviously before that game and before we're sitting here in seven days talking about that game if k-state wants to have a successful night against south dakota and build momentum going into the that going into that missouri game what do you think needs to happen you know um play fast play hard play disciplined football and and one thing a lot of people is not talking about that's kind of been a staple of k-state football special teams you mm-hmm. know and a lot of times we've always had a, a return guy um that can no matter who you were you know we have malik knows and he has a great uh history of making big returns you know punt return kickoff return special teams um punters kickers they've always been something that's been k-state you know special teams you you know k-state ball tech has always been teams who have been known to right. have great special teams. That's a big key. We have to have that as well. But also, I think we have to send a message that we are not just a fast team because people look at our offense and they say Martinez and his speed and Deuce, obviously, and his speed, but but physical. You know, we have Green on the defensive side of the ball. Who else is going to be that hammer on mm-hmm. the defense, you know? We have some guys that are capable, but who's going to step up? And I think we just need to let people know we're a complete team. It's not about winning the game, how we win the game is what I'm concerned about. Yeah, and there's been a lot of people that have talked about, you know, fans specifically, oh, you got to score this amount of points, you got to beat them by this much. And yeah. and, and I'm sure you, you agree with this as, as a former player and now a coach. It's, it's about how you feel as a team. How did you play? The final score is not necessarily indicative of how well you played. And right. I think if K-State can come out, and you mentioned it, be physical. Be dominant. Yep. That's how you build momentum. Yep. I mean, sure, you can come out and, and win a game 56 to 16 or, you know, or, but if you win 35 to 14, it could be just as good of a game for you. I mean, like there's there's a there's a lot that could happen uh, this week. And I, I don't think like the, the final score is is really has any indicator on how well this team plays, assuming, you know, that they have played well and it's a pretty comfortable win. No, you're correct. And a lot of times uh, me as a former player and, and, and been on the coaching side as well. You always look at the positives, and then, but you're always looking to get better. And you ask yourself, did you get better? Did you play better? And when you go back and watch film, and as a player, you know, we can have a great game. The fans are patting you on your back, saying how great you played. But you knew come Monday in film session, you know exactly what play it was. You knew what quarter, how many times it happened. Like, man, I had I screwed up on this. I lined up impro- wrong on this one. I, I had a bust on this. So, I think most college athletes have that attitude where they want to get better. And like you said, you can win the game, but you want to continue to get better. And like you said, going into Missouri game, 
obviously we're not going to be hitting on all cylinders that early in the season. It would be nice, but you want to get better because obviously Missouri is going to be a better opponent than South Dakota, mm -hmm. a former Big 8 slash Big 12 conference member. Uh, you know, we have our history and the fact that they're SEC now and we're Big 12, no matter who you are, there's a pride involved. And I guarantee pretty much every team from the Big 12, and maybe even KU will be pulling for us, you yeah. know. Um, and maybe. It, it, maybe. <laughs> who, who, you never know. But it's a pride thing, and you want to be able to send the message. You know what? We're still the Big 12. You chose to leave. Now we're going to whoop you. Head on back. <laughs> so. I, th I think I think what's good about this K-State team is they're not looking towards that game. No, no. And, and you know, it's maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. You played against Missouri. I know a lot of fans remember those games against Missouri, but nobody on this team played no. against Missouri. 11 years was the, was the last time K-State and Missouri play it just seems crazy to think that right so i mean i don't think k-state fans should worry about oh they're overlooking south dakota because I, I don't i don't think the players are and i know the coaches aren't you know i i know that's not the case and so um i i think if k-state wants to have a successful night against south dakota you 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 said be physical to me it's play fast yeah I mean that 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 is to me is the biggest thing like we talked about so many times know where to line up you know where to line up that's half the battle right there. And so if they can play fast and look sharp, mm -hmm. right, I, they're going to turn the ball over. They're yeah. going to kick the ball out of bounds, right? They're going to miss field goals. They're going to, you know, there's going to be plays where they give up big plays. Yeah. But if they can limit those things right. and more specifically play fast and just look confident, I, I think that there's a, there's a lot that can be said about gaining confidence. Mm -hmm. Not saying these guys aren't confident because I think they're extremely confident. But thinking that you're good and then knowing yeah. that you're good, yep. there's a huge difference. It is. And one and one thing, I, I was fortunate enough to play with some great coaches. And one thing, as a defense, they always preach, impose your will. Impose your will. Take away the confidence. Don't let them have any confidence. If you let them hang around, they'll make plays and their confidence will grow. Take, you know, impose your will. Take the confidence right away. And then, when you, like you said, put, put your foot on the throat and put your foot on your neck, finish your deal. That's the attitude case they has. They have to have that. We are the better team. We need to let you know why we're the better team, and we're going to show you. And like you said, play fast, play physical, finish the deal, and then let everything else take care of itself. And I think getting a lot of guys into the game is important too. Absolutely. I mean, this is something about it's, – it's about building depth, yeah. right? You're not going to win if you don't have depth. Hmm. That's just the bottom line. I mean, how many times have we seen a key player at a key position, maybe not the star player, mm -hmm. but a key player go down, and then there's such a huge drop-off? I mean – these are the games where you build that depth, right. and I mean, you you know this just as well as anyone. But if you can, if you're a young guy, yeah. being able to get in and get your feet wet, there is a lot to that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I remember as a redshirt freshman, um, we took pride in getting on special teams. You know, it was one of those things our coaches said. You may not be in the starting top two, but if you can get on the field with special teams, you can find out the speed of the game. And if you excel on special teams, whenever we have a blowout or we have a substantial lead, mm -hmm. those guys who have been playing on special teams and showing us that you want to work are going to get in the game. And that's what, that's how it was for me. You know, special teams, getting some backup time in the game, and eventually started. And it was one of those things where um, you take pride in it. And we do need to get as many guys in the game as much as possible to get real-time experience. And now with the – the red shirt rule. You can play four games without, yeah. you know, potentially. What was that at when I was playing? <laughs> yeah, right? You could have so much more experience. I mean, it's Malik, Malik. At the prime example, this is Malik Knowles. I mean, he comes in as a true freshman. Yep. He plays in four games. He catches like two or three touchdowns. Right. It seems like the guy's been here for forever. And, you know, he's a red shirt senior. It's like, oh, well, he kind of has been here for forever. But yes. he's played in five different parts of seasons for K-State. So I think getting guys involved in the game and getting true freshmen to the game, too. I mean, now I know it's hard, and as a coaching standpoint, you don't necessarily you don't want to put guys out there if they're not ready. Right. But on that same hand, you want to see what you have. Right? Yeah. And if you're good enough to play, true freshman or not, play the kid. But yeah, exactly. You need to find out how guys are going to respond in pressure situations because I don't care who you are. Like Coach said, you can be a practice All American, but when the game comes, if you can't produce, I'm not going to play you. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and it holds true. But a lot of times, guys kind of, they get nervous under pressure. But some guys, they shine. And like you said, you want to know what you have. And I think getting those guys into the game on in, in special teams, like mm -hmm. you said, I mean, that's been K-State's calling card. Oh, you yeah. mentioned it. But another thing I want to see in this game is is how are the special teams? Because you mentioned Philip Brooks, or you mentioned Malik Knowles. Don't forget about Philip Brooks, another <laughs> one of those guys back Absolutely. there as a punt returner, right? Yeah. Getting those guys some game action, getting those guys some reps, because if K-State wants to have the season that they want to have this year, 
they've got to excel on special teams. And it starts every game, right? I mean, we talked about it in the beginning part of the show. K-State beat South Dakota a few years ago because of Isaiah Zuber on a punt return. Special teams. I mean, it, there's a huge part of that game, and, and people forget about that. But, I mean, special teams is just as big as anything. So I think having a solid special teams outing shouldn't go overlooked because no. K-State – Frankly, put has lost some games due to special teams, and <laughs> I mean, if, if you can be sharp on special teams in the very beginning, mm-hmm. opening season, that is something that you can be perfect at. This is true, and I know for a fact because I play with some guys who, and it's not a knock against them, but they want the most athletic on the team, but they took pride in it and they found a way. And it's one of the things a lot of guys you you don't realize it, but some guys who may not never see the field uh, as a starter, they took pride in special teams and they understood to travel. They had mm-hmm. to be on the special teams, yep. you know, to, to get on the field. They had to be on the special teams. So that was their game. So when they got in, they went 110%, and you knew it. And when you watch film, they would block a guy literally to the whistle. Mm-hmm. And the other guys around them recognized that, and they appreciated it. And they, and they gave them a lot of love because of it. Because normally, the Malik knows, the Brooks get all the credit, and they get the media because they scored touchdowns. But the guys blocking for them were the ones who do the dirty work and took a lot of pride in it. And I'm hoping to see that come Saturday as well from guys who may not be big names, but they're, they're landing on the line, taking pride in it, and making plays. And so as we kind of transition here and talk about Missouri just briefly before we wrap up the show, I, I want to bring this up because, again, we mentioned K-State and Missouri have not played in 11 years. Uh, West Virginia and Pitt played, renewed their rivalry with the backyard brawl. Rivalries are really good for college sports. Yes. And, I mean, you know, this, if, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably have a hatred for Missouri. There's a lot of people that do not like Missouri in this part of the country. And um, I, I think that that game, I think this game against South Dakota mm-hmm. is only going to build up the hype and build up and get the juices flowing um, from the players to the coaches to the fans for that Missouri game. Because, I mean, it, it's a really big game. Absolutely. You know, it's one of those things where I, I, I'm ready to see K-State play Saturday, but I'm ready to get it over with, to get into Missouri week, you <laughs> yeah. know? And it's one of those things where the week is, you know, like anybody who's a college football fan, when you have a rivalry week, the week together is more fun mm-hmm. because you have each day you're building up to it and you have something to look forward to it. The media's covering it, your coworkers, your friends, whoever it may be. It's one of those things where, you know, Saturday is coming, you know? Are you going? What are you tailgating? Um, what are you wearing? Who are you going with? It's a big deal, and I'm excited about it, and we're two weeks away from that game, so you got to kind of keep it, uh, kind of rein in a little bit, but yeah, I'm excited about the game. Do you think there's any prep work for that game beforehand? I mean, maybe they'll tell, maybe they won't tell the players. They'll they'll run some plays. They'll mm-hmm. mix in the plays from Missouri just so the players kind of have an idea, but what, do you think there's any prep work at all in, in fall camp for that Missouri game? It happens, absolutely. It happens, especially being uh, that early in the year. It happens. I'm pretty sure they put some packages in uh, specifically for Missouri. Uh, They might not focus on it this past week, but they prepped them, understanding formations, how they're going to adjust to it. But absolutely. Yeah, I feel like it'd be impossible as a coach to not get excited about that game. And I mean, Missouri's got some talent. We'll definitely take a deeper dive into Missouri and K-State once we actually see a game. You Mm -hmm. know, K-State's actually able to get there. We're able to talk about some little bit more from an X's and O's standpoint. But I mean, Missouri's got the number one player in the country at the receiver position, the number one freshman in the country in Luther Burden. And, and there's, they're going to come in here. There's going to be, I think there's going to be some Missouri fans. I don't think there's going to be a lot of Missouri fans, yeah. but I definitely think that um, it's going to be a great college football environment. But you know, you mentioned it. I think this week, um, and I've heard this term described, it's like, this is the family reunion, right? Yes. Everybody's coming back together for this game against South Dakota. It's the feel right. It's the get right game. Right. And then you got to lock back in because you know that you have a huge rivalry game with Missouri. Absolutely. And, you know, as, as crazy as it sounds, I'm glad we're playing a South Dakota, excuse me, South Dakota the first game and then a Missouri because it, it sets up for the perfect opportunity for us. And I say, when I say us, the football team, but the K-State community, the K-State family all together from the campus to the surrounding communities, to the alumni, um, even players who are in the NFL, they're on social media, you know, chirping back and forth because, you know, Missouri was in the Big 8 and the Big 12, and we didn't like them when they played in the Big 12. We don't like them now. But it's one of those things where it just makes the game of football 
more fun. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a great week. We'll talk about it a lot next week. Before we go, I want to get into our pick segment. We'll pick the K-State game. Um, I'll go ahead and start. I Again, I don't think that this is going to be much of a game. Um, I, the line, the betting line, since sports betting in Kansas is legal. I saw that. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the betting line we've been using here at Go Power Cats, 19 and a half. Um, I, I'm going to pick K-State to cover that. I think they're going to win. Um, I'll go ahead and give a score of 42 to 14. That's going to be my score. <laughs> See, that's not fair. I should have went first because <laughs> I honestly was going to go 43 or 42 to 14. Okay, there you and, go. And I'm giving, I'm giving our starting defense is giving up seven points, and then once we get up, the backups will come in and give up score a score late but 42 to 14 as well. There we go. Well, you know what's going to happen is it's not even going to be close to 42 <laughs> to 14. And just so everybody knows, last week we were wearing black shirts, not planned. This week we're wearing purple shirts, Seriously. not planned. So I, I don't know. Something's going on here. we got to figure it out. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, so much for listening. I'm Cole Conrad. That's Monty Spiller. Uh, you've been listening to the Friday Walkthrough. We're sponsored by the Part-Time Beverage Company, specifically Cape Cod and Club Special. Make sure you check that out. Make sure you're checking out Go Power Cat. I mentioned it to start the second half. we got 75% off right now. Go take advantage of that. For now, enjoy the game on Saturday. Have a great time, and we'll talk to you next week. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.